Uh, hello everybody, this is Randall for Floribama Homesteader. <clears throat> Today I decided to do, go ahead and do a, uh, a spring garden intro slash update. We've actually had the garden started out going for uh, a few weeks now. And um, I just haven't gotten around to making a video of this year's uh, garden. But today is uh, April 21st, 2019. So happy Easter, everybody. Um, <clears throat> so here's what we added this year. We come over here, and I hope the sun isn't messing this up too bad. But we, st we uh, took a cattle panel, <clears throat> and we made it 12 foot long and tied it in up there to the top of our 7 foot fence. And then we put these little raised beds down at the bottom here. And in this bed, we've uh, we've done our rattlesnake green beans for this year. I did a video where you saw me a few weeks ago planting those. And uh, so those are up and up and going now. But over the top of our green beans, you'll see I got this little plastic netting. Now the, the reason for the plastic is I got chickens that, that free range in the afternoons and they love to scratch everything in sight. So I decided to put this netting over here and let the beans grow up through the netting and then onto the trellis and then they won't be in there scratching that dirt around uh, messing my beans up. So we've got three of those beds going. In the center bed here we got uh, cucumbers and uh, some little melons coming up there. So that's what we're going to have on this fence. And then back here again we have the rattlesnake green beans. And so the idea, like I said earlier, as they grow up on this trellis all the way up to the top of this seven foot fence. So they got 12 foot of grow room this time and I can reach all the way to the top of this wire. So when the green beans grow and they hang down through here, I should be able to just walk through here and pick the green beans without worrying too much about uh, moving the vines. And so that's the object. We started out with three. We don't know how we're gonna like them how well it's going to function but we're going to give it a go we're going to see how it turns out <clears throat> all right so let's walk around to the uh to the gate i'll take you into the garden and i'll show you what we've got going on here now our tomatoes we put back we put in the ground back in uh, the middle of february we had a warm spell and i really wasn't sure if we were going to get another freeze or not and uh, so I spent $5 and bought some uh, already started uh, plants. I bought Early Girl and I bought um, Big Boy. And uh, those are some of the ones that I like to plant. And I put those in the ground with the idea that if we got another hard freeze, I'd be able to protect them through the winter. So, um, let, yeah, let me just start here and then I'll walk around. And this is not going to be a long video, guys, I promise. I uh, just want to give you a quick walkthrough and uh, just kind of give you an update of what's going on. Now this blank spot right here is uh, where I have my turmeric. And I dug down the other day, looked at it, it's starting to grow roots. So hopefully another week or two we'll get some uh, turmeric start growing. And this will be the first year we have the turmeric in the ground. I got some uh, New Zealand spinach that from uh, reseeded last year's plants I didn't plant that that's just volunteer now the cabbage moth have just tore us up this year and they did last year as well so when I was talking with Michelle I think what we're going to do this time next spring or either this fall we're going to get a uh, an insect cloth and we're going to build a dome over the top of our raised beds and then we're going to put our uh, our cabbage and our broccoli and that and hopefully that'll protect them from the uh from the the cabbage moth that likes to tear us up so bad um all right so this is an early girl like i said planted these back in february but we got pretty good little tomatoes and for easter i think uh i think we're ahead of the game here looking real good good size nice health nice healthy looking plants and hopefully another, uh, I'd say about two weeks, we should be able to eat uh, fresh garden tomatoes. <clears throat> Eggplant. Now the cabbage. Um, this bed right here, our asparagus is starting to come up. I put my stakes in yesterday. I need to get some type of a netting or a wire or something. 
and go around this bed and I train all this stuff back upright. And I told Michelle I wasn't going to do this video without staking that stuff up. And I started the video and totally forgot to go grab something to put this up with. Apologize, Michelle. But uh, I guess, you know, that's typical garden life. Not everything is perfect. <clears throat> so all through here, we've got big boy. So these are all big boy tomatoes. And uh, they've got uh, they've got tomatoes on them. They're bearing. And then starting here, I've got uh, early girl again. So I did five early girl on this one. And that first one I showed you was an early girl. And the, the ones in between were big boys. All right. Um, so broccoli bed. Had a couple of broccoli that didn't make it. So in this place, I put a lunchbox pepper and a uh, eggplant. An eggplant I started from seed. The lunchbox pepper I did not, and I didn't. I didn't start these broccoli from uh, from seed this year. I got these as starts from our local feed feed and seed co-op. But uh, they're starting to put put on heads. So in a couple of weeks, we should be putting all of our broccoli in the freezer. So I'm excited for that. Now this ugly bed right here. This was our strawberry bed and the last year got really really hot and i didn't have irrigation in here and uh i lost a lot of the uh, pepper a uh, lot of the uh, strawberry plants and i got about 20 of them in there if you believe it or not there's if you count them there are about 20. we're gonna probably pull these out free this bed up and then i'm gonna <clears throat> plant these uh strawberries somewhere else and uh we're going to probably come back in here and do maybe corn or something like that this year. Just a, a little bit of sweet corn. We don't eat a, a lot of sweet corn. We might have uh, corn three or four times a year. We really just don't eat a lot of corn. Uh, and corn is a grain. It's not a vegetable, in case you didn't know that. Um, now over here is our onions. These are the Kelsey onions. These are supposed to be the big onions to get up to eight pounds. I don't know if these are going to get there. These are my first, this is my first year growing the Kelsey onion. So I don't know how that's going to, how that's going to work out. Now, last year I had Walla Walla onions go to seed. And uh, these came up volunteer. So I dug them up and I planted them in here. And uh, those Walla Walla onions are putting on bulbs. They're looking real good. Had a volunteer lettuce come up from last year's garden. Now these are the onions that I started and I did a, a video back in September last year of me uh, putting these seeds in a seed flat and getting those going. And then I planted these out. I think it was January that I put these in the ground. And uh, they're starting to bulb up. The first half of this to about right there somewhere is uh, starts that I bought from the store. And from here over are the ones that I started from seed. You look down in there, starting to get some onions on them. There's some purple ones, red onions. We got a couple of different varieties of onions. I think I did four, maybe five varieties this year, just to get a variation, and then I can see what uh, what performs the best. But I may continue to do uh, variations anyway. All right, back around over here. That is a pepper do pepper. Looks like I had a little cut worm come along and cut that one off. Two or three days later, cut that one off. And that one survived so far. Those other two have put on uh, new leaves since they've been cut. So hopefully they'll come back. Red bell pepper, looking good. These are buttercup squash, winter squash. They're vining up. They're, um, they're a little over four foot tall now. And uh, I got some squash on them that have bloomed out. So this will be my first year raising buttercup squash. <clears throat> so I hope they do well for us. Now all down this row, along this seven foot fence, I have the uh, Big Mama um, sauce tomatoes. So we're going to make sauce and canned tomatoes out of these is going to be the plan. So we'll see how these turn out. Now, all these I did start from seed. And uh, the weird thing is, they don't look as good as the ones that I, that I bought from the store. 
and that may just be because of the variety differences that they are. I mean, they don't look bad, but they don't look as full and thick as the uh, big boy and the early girl. But we'll see how they do. And if you look right here, look at how these cabbage worms have just tore up my cabbage this year. Uh, hopefully I can save them and get some type of a head out of that. And I've been going through here and hand picking them in the last couple of days, trying to get them under control. <clears throat> so we'll see. Now over here is my carrot bed. And that's in a, uh, what was that? A little over three foot tall bed. Bottom half of it is wood chips. Top half of it is uh, topsoil, and it's a sandy topsoil. It does really good for my carrots. Last year I had a purple carrot that I didn't harvest, only because the, the freeze got all of my purple carrots. And uh, this one survived. And when I looked down here on the root, it didn't have a root to it. So I just let it go to seed, and we'll, uh, we'll probably save some of those seeds and and uh, see what we can do with those. But all the carrots looking good. I accidentally had some black seeded Simpson lettuce seeds get in here. So if you look all through here, I've got lettuce all throughout. But uh, when we want salad or we want lettuce for anything, we, we uh, come over here and kind of thin this out of here a little bit too. But the carrots are doing pretty good. Let's see, I'll just pull one out and show you how they look. There we go. If I lay that one up there like that, that carrot is almost as big as my arm. Look at that. How big that carrot is, that's huge. I get some really good results with this dirt. And uh, we'll probably take that in and juice that. But that's a good looking carrot. One of the things I did add this year is uh, we didn't have any place else to put this table, so I suggested, hey, let's just put it out in that uh, clear space out in the garden. Kind of glad I did, because it serves as my uh, my potting bench out here in this garden. I actually kind of like having it out here. Um, now I've got squash and zucchini just starting to get big enough to start putting on squash. See them down in there? They're starting to do pretty good. All right, finishing up the tour over here. Get back over here to this fence. I've got this bell pepper that I saved from last year. Dug it up, put it in a pot, saved it through the winter. Uh, cold killed it back one night. I had a little light frost that got to it, and uh, I trimmed off the dead, and all the greens came back, but uh, it's got buds on it, getting ready to bloom. We'll see how this does. This is uh, garlic. Garlic is looking real good. <clears throat> now last year, you heard me talk about artichokes. This is our first year that we've had artichokes. And uh, this plant looks really good right now. It didn't do well once it got hot last year. So I think the heat really stunted it, but through the winter, it really put on a lot of good growth. It's looking good. And this being the second year that we've had it in the ground, I guess we'll just leave it alone and see how it performs. A little pineapple that we, pineapple top, is starting to grow back right down in there. So maybe we'll uh, be able to grow some of those pineapple. We got some table queen acorn squash. And then over here is another raised bed. Again, three foot tall, L shaped, four foot wide on both sides so that we can get in here and get around. And I've got to add some soil to this once these beets get out of here. But we put these beets in here because I like to have beet pickle. So I did another big crop of beets this year. And I made my first batch of beet pickle the other night. And we're gonna see how that's gonna turn out. The recipe that I use is from Old, uh, old Alabama Gardener. So if you go on YouTube, look him up. He's got the best pickle uh, recipe that I've found. But uh, we got some nice sized beets. They're mature, they're ready to come out. And uh, so we're going to start real soon of putting all these beets up. But the greens on these look really good. And uh, we chop some of those into salads. And uh, we eat the beet greens. And then some of the spinach that we have. 
and then there's lettuce over there and that's our lettuce garden it's starting to get mature so once your lettuce gets mature that means you need to start your a new batch of lettuce because this will uh, this will be over and done with before you know it so over here we have some gin uh, ginger starting to come up another eggplant and artichokes and this was going to be, uh, once this goes to seed, this is going to be coriander. And then another artichoke. All right. Um, so overall, that's our garden as it started this year. And we'll see how it, how it finishes out. And uh, I'll continue to do periodic updates. But uh, as for now, go to YouTube and subscribe to Flora Bama Homesteader. All one word. Give me a like. Um, set your notifications and uh, share my videos if you like it. Uh, thanks for watching and we'll update you later.